Good morning, dear friends. This is Bishop John Quinn of the Diocese of Winona, Rochester, and I welcome you to this televised liturgy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear sisters and brothers, as we come to celebrate the Feast of the Ascension, we are reminded that from the beginning, human beings have been gazing upward into the skies, every time for something looking above so that the immensity of the universe leads to our understanding and hope that God is immense, eternal, and he has prepared an eternal place for us. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks. Glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Gladden us with holy joys, Almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving. For the ascension of Christ, your Son, is our exaltation. And where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. His first book, Theophilus was I with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes to you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, 
and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing here looking at the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. The response, Alleluia. All you peoples, clap your hands. Shout to God with cries of gladness. For the Lord Most High, the awesome, is the great king over all the earth. Alleluia. God mounts his throne amid shouts of joy. The Lord amid trumpets blast. Sing praise to God. Sing praise. Sing praise to our king. Sing praise. Alleluia. Alleluia. For the king of all the earth is God. Sing hymns of praise. God reigns over the nations. God sits upon his holy throne. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hands, a copy of the true one, but heaven itself, that he might now appear before God on our behalf. Not that he might offer himself repeatedly as a high priest enters each year into the sanctuary with blood that is not his own. If that were so, he would have had to suffer repeatedly from the foundation of the world. But now, once for all, he has appeared at the end of the ages to take away sin by his sacrifice. Just as it is appointed that men and women die once, and after this the judgment, so also Christ, offered once to take away the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since through the blood of Jesus we have confidence of entrance into the sanctuary by the new and living way he opened up for us through the veil that is his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a sincere heart and an, in absolute trust, with our hearts sprinkled clean from the evil conscience and the bodies washed in pure water. Let us hold unwaveringly to our confession that gives us hope, for he who made the promise is trustworthy. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Go and teach all nations, says the Lord. I am with you always until the end of the world. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, raised his hands and blessed them. As he blessed them, he, he parted from them and was taken up to heaven. They did him homage and then returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple praising God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear sisters and brothers, Nikki often boasted about his deep faith. Once upon a time, a storm arose 
and the rains threatened to flood Nikki's house. A fisherman rushed in and said, come, I will carry you away. Pointing upward, Nikki exclaimed, Jesus is the way. The downpour continued and the waters reached Nikki's waist. A fisherman rode by and screamed, jump in, I will steer you to safety. Gazing heavenward, Nikki retorted, only Jesus saves me. Later, the rising rainwater forced Nikki to climb onto the roof. The pilot of helicopter hovering overhead shouted, I will help you. But Nikki replied, I trust in God alone. Eventually, Nikki drowned in the raging waters and died. But when he reached heaven, he complained, Lord, I trusted you, but you abandoned me. God replied, no, I didn't. I tried to save you. I came in three times in three forms. First, I came as a fisherman, then a fireman, and then pilot. Why didn't it do anything besides gazing heavenward? As we know, Jesus ascends to heaven, not to abandon us, but to assume his proper authority. Jesus stands at the center of the universe and at the center of human history. In speaking about Jesus, St. Paul prays that God will open the eyes of your hearts. What does this phrase mean and how did it relate to the ascension? In the Bible, the heart is the place of planning and deciding. As Bishop Shulba observes, the eyes of the heart enable a person to plan wisely and well. Those eyes see the difference between good and evil, right and wrong, true and false. Above all, they see Jesus at the center of the cosmos and the center of human history. In the gospel, we see how faith guides action. When Jesus disappears from their sight, the disciples return to Jerusalem. Joy fills them, the joy that comes from gratitude. They don't mourn because Jesus left them. No, they recognize his profound presence in prayer and in the sacraments and in their coming together for at the Eucharistic table. Like the apostles, we want God to enlighten the eyes of our hearts to see Jesus and his plan for us. Just as Jesus told the disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Pope Francis says the same thing to Jesus' followers today amid the dramas of life. But God, what can we do so that our hearts are not troubled? As our hearts do become troubled with the anxieties of life, like the pandemic, rising prices, war, conflicts, disasters. There are two rem remedies for a troubled heart. The first is to trust in Jesus, and the second is to believe in his promise that those who love him will be with him forever in heaven. We do need to live with an aim, a focus, and a goal. Jesus has reserved a place for us in heaven. He took on our humanity to carry us beyond death to a new place in heaven so that where he is, we also may be. God is in love with us as we are his children. We are made for heaven, for eternal life, to live forever. Jesus so tells the disciples that he is the way, the truth, and the life. To go to heaven, the path is Jesus. It is having a living relationship with him, imitating him in love, following in his footsteps. The path that Jesus points out is the path of humble love, prayer, meekness, trust, 
and service to others. It is moving forward each day asking him, Jesus, what do you think of this choice of mine? What would you do in this situation with these people I am in? In the gospel, Jesus says, whatever you ask in my name, I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything of me, I will do it. Jesus wants people to have the same trust in the Father that he had, the same courage to pray, because praying requires courage. It requires the same courage, the same frankness that is needed to preach. The first task of us is to pray, and not be overwhelmed with preoccupations of life like work, family, finances. This is how we move forward as a faith community, with prayer, with the courage of prayer. Without this ascent to the Father, we cannot survive in this world. So seek the kingdom of God and everything will be added to you. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we are invited to follow Jesus in our day-to-day -day life and to continue the mission that he has entrusted to us, let us offer our prayers to the Father. For all our special intentions that we hold deep in our heart, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, as your son Jesus has ascended to the Father, we ask you to bless us as we continue his mission in this church, that we may continue to live with health, happiness, and joy, and thus glorify you forever and ever through Jesus Christ. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from all holy state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, 
and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <coughs> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With longing for the coming of God's righteousness, let us offer our prayers to the Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, to set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant we pray that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you for on this very day, his only begotten Son pierced the heights of heaven and unlocked for you the way to ascend to where he is. Amen. May he grant that as Christ after his resurrection was seen plainly by his disciples, so when he comes as judge, he may show himself merciful to you for all eternity. Amen. And may you who believe he is seated with the Father in his majesty, know with joy the fulfillment of his promise to stay with you until the end of time. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much. Have a nice and beautiful day. Thank you for joining us for this Sunday's televised Mass. I hope it has brought you spiritual joy and comfort this day. If this Mass has helped you or someone you know, please consider sending a donation to the address on the screen or by visiting our website at dowr.org and clicking the weekly Mass icon. Thank you and God bless.